In this year's Champions League group stage, Manchester United have been paired with Bayern Munich, one of the big name ties of the first round for sure, and two of the most storied clubs in European history. You would be more likely to hear Manchester United versus Bayern Munich in the latter stages of this tournament given the prowess of both of these gargantuan clubs. United's third European crown came in 2008 and Bayern Munich's sixth came more recently in 2020. The two red giants also shared the stage on one of the most famous nights in Champions League history, the 1999 Champions League final. On that particular night, Bayern Munich looked to have sewn up another title as they went into stoppage time, leading United 1-0. The Red Devils, however, had other ideas and weren't playing for just the European Cup, but also their own historic treble. The Manchester men prevailed and didn't let the golden opportunity slip through their fingertips. The final whistle blew and United had won the game 2-1 with two late goals. They had come back from the dead in stoppage time at the wonderful Camp Nou in Barcelona. Almost 100,000 packed into the stadium that night to witness history in the form of Teddy Sheringham's equaliser in the 91st minute and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's winner in the 93rd. The Germans were left shocked and speechless and United started one of the biggest parties ever thrown. Historically, Bayern have had the edge over United in Europe, but on that fateful night, when it mattered most, they fell short. The pair have also met in the quarterfinals on three occasions in this century. In 2001, Bayern won the trophy after defeating United 3-1 on aggregate in the quarters. In 2010, Bayern triumphed again over United on away goals as their quarterfinal tie finished 4-4 on aggregate. Bayern went on to finish as tournament runners-up that year. Then, in 2014, Munich yet again defeated the Mancunians, this time with a 4-2 aggregate victory in the last eight, only to face a heavy defeat to Real Madrid in the semis. This year, the rhetoric, of course, is Harry Kane taking on Man U, a club from his home country with whom he was linked many times in the past. Kane has decided to go abroad and is hungry for trophies with the Bavarian giants. Bayern have already beat Man U in the group and will hope to do the same at Old Trafford. Though United should have been a test, they've been struggling themselves just to get into the top two. In fact, Bayern's 4-3 victory against United, if anything, flattered the English side. Sadly, not all of the memories of Manchester and Munich are happy ones. And every time these two names get pulled out of the hat together, we cannot help but think of the Busby Babes and the dreadful Munich Air disaster of 1958. The Busby Babes were a group of footballers who came through the ranks at Manchester United under the guise of Chief Scout Joe Armstrong and Assistant Manager Jimmy Murphy. Those boys became men as they progressed from the academy to the first team under the management of Matt Busby from the late 1940s and throughout the 1950s. The Busby Babes had been tipped for European domination, but in tragic circumstances, eight players died as a result of the Munich Air disaster on February 6th 1958. The flight had a total of 23 fatalities including those players, club staff members and two journalists and a co-pilot. Players like Jackie Blanchflower and Johnny Berry survived the disaster but never played football again and sadly passed away in the 90s. The last living player from the Munich Air disaster was the legendary Sir Bobby Charlton who sadly passed away recently too. Charlton went on to win everything in football, including of course the 1966 World Cup. He is regarded as a Manchester United and England legend and of the Munich tragedy he commented, I was lucky, I was just lucky, I happened to sit in the right place. The career that Charlton had afterwards was a great tribute to his teammates. The Manchester United team were on the way home from a European Cup match in Belgrade after eliminating Red Star Belgrade from the tournament to advance to the semi-finals. The flight stopped to refuel in Munich because a non-stop flight from Belgrade to Manchester was beyond the range of the Elizabethan class airspeed ambassador plane. Conditions were poor and disaster struck on the third takeoff attempt that fateful night. It was said that goalkeeper Harry Gregg was leading the efforts to try and pull people out of the plane alive. The team was so young at the time of the crash and all eight squad members that sadly passed away were in their 20s and had so much left to give in life and of course on the football pitch for Man United. It was a true tragedy and one of the most devastating to ever hit the sport of football. An investigation by West German airport authorities originally blamed the pilots of the aircraft claiming that they failed to de-ice the plane's wings. 
yet various eyewitness statements said that de-icing wasn't necessary, and later it would be found out that the crash had been caused by slush on the runway, which slowed the plane too much to enable takeoff, causing it to skid and crash through the fence into a nearby house and a barn that was housing a fuel truck. A decade after the incident, pilot James Thane, who had survived the crash, was cleared of responsibility or wrongdoing. At the time, United were on their way to achieving history and perhaps not just in Europe either. They were aiming to become the third club to win three successive Football League titles, six points behind Wolves with 14 games left to play. United were on an unbeaten streak of 11 games. The crash took lives and derailed perhaps what would have been another golden generation for Manchester United Football Club. It took a decade for the club to really get back to the level they were at in 1958 with the emergence of the super talented Busby Babes. Busby himself stayed at the helm and rebuilt his team once more. Ten years later, in 1968, Manchester United would poetically go on to win their first European Cup with the new generation of the Babes. Manchester United fans have never forgotten the Busby Babes or the Munich Air tragedy and the events of 1958 remain a painful but important part of the club's long and famous history. Many great tragedies call for a greater sense of unity thereafter and the Red Devils' success and story since that time has shown that they truly are united. This year's Manchester Munich matchup gives a respectful nod to that time amidst the glitz and glamour of modern day football as Eric Ten Hag sets to build his Manchester United squad for the future and Harry Kane has his sights firmly set on silverware. Looking to add his name to the list of Munich and Manchester European Cup winners gone by.